Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. Last two times we've played against the opponents that uh, pretty much just defeated us very easily. So I'm very pissed at that. Let's play against a random opponent again. Like this is not going very well for us. So today we'll be playing against Apu Nahasappeemapetilon. Jesus fucking Christ. And uh, yeah, let's see how well we'll do. So uh, we're going second. Let's see how he how well he'll play. He immediately summons a two slash two human scout creature, which has the effect of you can't get poison counters. Creatures you control can't have minus one minus one counters placed on them, and creatures your opponent control your opponent's control lo lose infect. Interesting. Let's continue on. He's going to attack us with his uh, uh, Melira. It's Melira, not Melissa. Never mind. Let's summon a Feral Prowler, which is a one slash free cat creature, which has the effect of when Feral Prowler dies, draw a card. He casts a Lightning Bolt, which does uh, free damage to my fer to me specifically. Now he casts a Mox Pearl, which uh, is an artifact, which when tapped, it it would uh, it would add uh, white mana to his mana pool. And he uses that immediately to cast a Bloodbraid Elf, which is a 3 slash 2 Elf Berserk creature, which has haste and cascade. This means that he can use it to attack me the, 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 uh, even in the turn when it's summoned. And cascade means that uh, when you cast this spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Put the exalt cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. Interesting. So he got a time of need. And, and Melira Silvoke Outcast. Okay. Now he's attacking me with his blood, blood braid elf and I will block him with my feral prowler. My fellow prowler will die from this exchange, but if, if he does, I will get to draw another card, which is to my advantage. Let's now summon a giant spider, which is a 2 slash 4 spider creature, which has reach. Let's summon another giant spider. He summons a Kitchen Finks, which is a 3 slash 2 Auf creature, which has the effects of when Kitchen Finks enters the battlefield, you gain 2 life. And it also has the effect of Persist, which means that when this creature dies, if it had no minus 1 minus 1 counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. Interesting. Now let's um, let's use an ambuscade with uh, one of our giant spiders to destroy his blood braid elf. And now let's summon a Prowling Serpopard, which is a 4 slash 3 cat snake creature, which has the effect of Prowling Serpopard can be countered, and creature spells you control can be countered. That's enough for now. Now let's summon a Skill Behemoth, which is a 6 slash 7 crocodile creature, which is hexproof, which means that this creature can be the target of spells or abilities your opponent controls. Now let's attack him for Prowling Serpopard. He will block our Prowling Serpopard with his Kitchen Finks. Now, um, they're both strong enough to kill each other, which is quite unfortunate. And now his Kitchen Finks he used his its a Persist ability to uh, get uh, to come back from the graveyard with a minus one minus one counter on it. 
Where is the minus one minus one counter? I don't get there. Now he puts an enchantment which is called Phyrixian on life, which has the effects of you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. As long as you have zero or less life, all damage is, is dealt to you as though its source had infect. Which means that damage is dealt to you in the form of poison counters. Interesting. Let's summon a Beetle Blade Sharpshooters, which is a force life 4 Jackal Archer, which has the effects of Vigilance and Reach. And now let's attack him with our skill Behemoth. He blocks us with his kitchen things once again. But that won't do him much good. He now he summons a safe hold elite, which is a 2 slash 2 elf creature which has persist as well. Let's summon 4 in elemental, which is a 7 slash 7 elemental creature, which has the effect of you may have 4 in elemental deal its combat damage to defending player as though it were unblocked. Now let's attack him with our skill behemoth and our bitter blade sharpshooter. He blocks our bitter blade sharpshooters with both his ki uh, kitchen flint and his Melira seal walk outcast. Let's get rid of his Melira first. Okay, th those got defeated. Now let's uh, attack him with all of our good creatures. He uses a lightning ball to deal free damage to me. And now he summons a murderous red cap, which is a 2 slash 2 goblin assassin, which has the effect of when murderous red cap enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. And he did damage to me directly. Now let's alpha strike him. He'll try to block everything that uh, I have, but uh, that won't do him much good, honestly. He's going to attack me with everything that he has, but uh, at the end of the day, it won't really matter. We'll do that. Oh, wait, I forgot. He can't die due to his Phyrexian on life. Oh, fuck. Seriously? But how does he die then? Well, that fucking sucked. Let's go for another round. How the fuck does he die then? I don't get that. Uh, let's try this again. Let's summon a bitter blade. Oh uh, no, we cannot do that just yet. Never mind. Let's summon a bitter blade sharpshooter now. He casts a Blasting Station, which is an artifact which has the effect of for tapping and sacrificing a creature, Blasting Station deals one a blasting station deals one damage to target creature or player. Whenever a creature comes into play, you may tap Blasting Station. Interesting. And he also casts a gob goblin bombardment, which is an enchantment which has the effect of sacrifice a creature. Goblin Bombardment deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Interesting. Let's get rid of his uh, kitchen things. I'm not entirely sure what's happening. But something is happening. I feel like we're in a loop. Yeah, we're in a loop. Can we do anything about this? Let's summon a shared weakness so that we can we may be able to interrupt the loop. And I just lost somehow. I'm not too sure what happened there. Well, something weird happened, I guess. Let's add another uh, another copy of Bitterbow Sharpshooters. Uh, so Bitterbow Sharpshooters, it's this one. 
let's go a sort by name and uh, is it here yeah it's over here let's add another copy of it anyways that's it for today's video thank you very much for watching i'm not entirely sure what happened there at the end but uh, something happened i guess but that's it for today's video thank you very much for watching if you want to get in touch with me i have a mastodon account as well as a matrix room that you can join details of which you can find in the description of this video and in the meantime see you next time